Profession this week, episode number 56. This week we're going to take a look at content marketing tips for those boring industries it's just hard to write for. Tips on various tools for keyword research, some technical SEO, manual penalties, changes to AdWords, and even how Google is changing some stuff to how you see the search results. All this and more on SEO This Week. Okay, folks, welcome to another episode of SEO This Week. I appreciate it. My name is Clint Butler, and here we go. First, we're going to start off on the Moz site. we got two posts from here. It's the uh, first one is Tangio, Tangential, Tangential. I, I, you guys have to tell me how to pronounce that word. Content earns more links and shares than in boring industries. Basically, the crest of this article is... And the example I gave is actually a pretty good one. So let's say you're a pool installer. There's only so many ways you can write about installing a pool. Um, you can, But you can actually kind of pick that up and do some different things. So let's say you're a pool installer. Now you have to do barbecue stuff, right? So maybe you're installing the barbecue kitchens. You can do design tips. You can do uh, barbecue recipes, uh, safety tips, that kind of stuff. Um, is your tangent, tangential tangential con content <laughs> i'm not going to be able to pronounce that word um f for those and you're going to probably run into this uh this need or this requirement if you're doing a lot of local stuff plumbers there's only so much you can write about plumbing dentists there's only so much you can write about dentistry um that kind of thing so you want to kind of think about about around the box or you know out of the box in order to determine what to what to write about an example that we would do on an SEO site like ours is, let's say we're targeting Bellevue SEO, for example. So we do a post about coffee shops near me and why, you know, because we want to, you know, we meet our clients typically in coffee shops because we like that and the atmosphere is awesome. Uh, or local events that you want to, you know, you keep abreast of that and you can do a, uh, you know, Bellevue events to help support your, your relevancy and to, you know, Again, it's also a resource for us because now we know where events are, so we can go hang out at those events and meet new people as well. So, um, thinking along those lines, this really interesting article just kind of get the juices flowing. Uh, if anything, I don't know that it'll help you write a lot more, but you'll actually get some stuff done. Next is a uh, whiteboard Friday. This is actually a pretty interesting one. I'm not going to go too deep into it, but basically, here's what it boils down to: is Moz released a keywords feature called Keywords by Site. Um, and basically what it does is it looks at the keywords rank that you're ranking for, tries to identify all of them. Uh, it looks at and then it compares you with your competition and you can see those data sets side by side. Ahrefs, Majestic, uh, and SEMrush were already doing it. Now Moz kind of playing catch up. But they're, this post or this whiteboard Friday just kind of give you some ideas of why that should be valuable for you. You can find the keyword opportunities that your competition has found. You can find where is some where you're lacking, uh, and you can you know expand and put that together with the content marketing stuff that I just talked about, uh, and capture more traffic. Especially considering your uh, competition already did the research and the work for you, right? So. Uh, this is an interesting look at how to leverage those tools. Short video, it won't take you that much time to get through it all. Search Engine Land is tips to troubleshoot your technical SEO. This is a pretty good article. It goes over search operators like Info, uh, changing the Google search URL, the site search operators, site domain keyword operators, uh, and some other you know minor stuff that you're going to look at inside of uh, your website for, on a technical aspect just to make sure everything's going right. One cool thing is the uh, Google Chrome developers allow you to switch to a Google bot. Uh, you know, if you want to do that, you can. I use Screaming Frog, you can emulate that, or uh, SEO Power Suite, then their website auditor, you can emulate the Google bot as well. Just kind of save yourself the drama of messing with your Chrome installation. Especially since that's recommended to do when you're incognito. So you got to set it up and then you get out of incognito and now it's gone. You got to do it every time. It's just kind of a pain. Just easier just to do use a piece of software that, that's designed to uh, emulate for you right off the bat. 
But I think it's pretty interesting, especially if you don't know much about the uh, the side operators and some things that you can do with those. Just check it out. Uh, short read, and you'll be able to get through it really quick. Search Engine Journal, uh, Google Search will no longer use domains to indicate country service. So basically what that means is let's say you're uh, in uh, the Netherlands and then you take a plane, you jump to the U.S., it's going to automatically switch you to uh, to uh, dot .com. And then you go to Australia, it'll switch you to the dot .co dot .uk. It's all based on your geo now just to set things up and make it a little bit more complicated for the rank trackers is, is really who's who this is really going to affect the most, I think is the uh, the rank trackers and it will uh, you know just make it a little bit harder to keep those 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 companies uh, to keep accurate results in my opinion we'll see how it works out but really I think this is kind of a mobile thing more than anything else and um, I, I don't see it becoming an issue for you just kind of know what's going on if you're taking a trip somewhere and you were trying to show something off from your U.S. location, but you're in England, well, now you're showing off the U.K. results, and that's why that site that you're showing live isn't ranking in number one anymore, because you're in the U.K. Uh, next, search engine land, all Google manual penalties explained from SMX East. Basically, it just brings out a list of the Google penalties you can probably get. We've seen the unnatural links, unnatural links from, unnatural links to, uh, user-generated content spam hacked websites pure spam is one you probably see if the if your uh, private blog networks have picked up they'll call it pure spam spammy structured markup and usually you see that one if uh, you have reviews on your site uh, or a review markup on your site but you don't have reviews on the page or, or you have your reviews set site wide they'll, they'll hit you with that one Hidden text or keyword stuffing, thin content with little or no added value. That's really subjective. You're going to see that a lot, though, if you're doing like Amazon sites and you're pulling the Amazon descriptions and all that stuff and you're not adding to it, uh, then you can see the thin content one. That one's pretty easy to get out of. And then the rest of the post just kind of go over looking at the bat, the links, reaching out to those people, asking them to remove them, which they're not going to remove them, and then doing a disavow and then setting up a reconsideration request. It is a simple process, but it is a pain to do. Well, it is as simple as it sounds, but it is actually a pain to do because, well, one, like I said, or I imply, people typically won't remove the links, and then two, you got to disavow, and then you submit a reconsideration request if they decide to lift it uh, after the third or fourth time, because typically they won't do it the first time. They'll go through and play whack-a-mole with you on a whole bunch of links. Uh, just to uh, make it challenging and kind of make you feel the pain. This is a couple month process at least. Uh, again, it takes a lot of work and a lot of man hours. Search Engine Journal again is two new AdWords features. Uh, this one is the daily budget we all knew about. He sets that, it kind of bounces over your daily budget. If uh, the giving a, a search bike those days, it kind of helps you out in that way. Uh, but it won't go over your monthly. And then they had the ads by AdWords. What is basically what it is is they look at your ad copy, the AI, uh, and essentially creates a new version of the ad that it thinks will convert better, and then it applies it. If you don't apply it within 14 days of the you getting the notice, it'll do it automatically. Uh, but you can opt out of this if you want to. I say just go ahead and you know try it out and see what happens. Uh, if you but if you notice a history that it just it's horrible for you, then go ahead and turn it off in your MCC. And then uh, bid to outrank competitors. That's actually pretty cool. You just kind of set it up so you want to always outrank your competitors uh, to to win. I guess, but, you know, based on the who your client is, then that might not be an option for you. So use with caution, especially if you're in a competitive thing where you got a couple of a-holes that are just, you know, jacking up the average price. They'll burn everyone, burn through their budgets really quick, but you end up paying more just to be competitive in that market. Yoast is a uh, HTTP 503 errors, hate handling site maintenance for SEO. Honestly, really, if your site's down that long and you're probably doing it wrong, I would actually 
if you're going to take a site down that you need to use the 503, I would be, you know, building a backup, making your changes on the backup, and then applying the new backup so that there is no noticeable downtime to the servers. Um, but this is really for general users, I think, and just kind of know what these 200, 300, and 400 codes mean uh, and uh, why and when they should be and should not be applied. Uh, if you are into the 503 thing and you want to just go ahead and do it for God knows what reason, uh, then this tell you how to in the quote unquote safest way possible for SEO. Next is Moz, and this was a, a how to do a competitor analysis for SEO. You're going to get a cool Google Sheets template in here. I actually think it's pretty handy. I downloaded it myself. Uh, I'm going to be leveraging that. Uh, and then you can use the uh, Moz or uh, any other tool really this is kind of based mainly on SEM rush but um, Moz got a little bit of help in there too as well from the keywords from their open site explorer uh, for linking domains but you can get that from Ahrefs and then just kind of you know plug it all in there and you have a nice handy graph to uh, you know monitor what your uh, competition is doing or what your client's competition is doing, you have a deliverable for them to kind of show off the, the work you're doing as part of your keyword research. So check this out, download the spreadsheet. Next is search engine land and we're going to look at this one. It is uh, SEO ranking factors in 2017. What's important and what's not? This is all subjective. These are three panelists inside of the ever at SMX events and this is their their um, their talks SEM Rush is one they did a post quite some time ago actually where they looked at a whole bunch of keyword research or keyword terms uh, declared competitions and, and said the value security content length keywords traffic and user signals and links were the factors that they pointed out the next one was search metrics and theirs was pretty much along the same lines uh, and just but uh, Knowing, noting finally that uh, the different ranking factors for based on the keywords, but they didn't get that that uh, focused inside of their study. They just did it by industry, uh, and even within the industry, we know that keyword ranking are the ranking factors are different in, inside of individual industries as well. This is actually a pretty interesting one, though. I think you'll enjoy it. Just kind of a roll up. Uh, ultimately, you should have a uh, look at HTTPS, use it if you think, if your users are looking for it. Um, set your metadata and make sure your site is fast is really what it boils down to from these three presentations. It would have been a lot cooler if there was actually a video here, but unfortunately you only get the slides you kind of figure out on your own uh, what they were talking about. Next is a conversion linker and first party conversion tracking in Google AdWords. This is from the PPC Mastery Course People, uh, Jeff Sauer. This uh, is actually a post about Google Tag Manager and the new feature is called Conversion Linker. There's not a whole lot of documentation on it. Apple changed the way tracking works, so this is Google's response essentially. Uh, so you're going to have to kind of go through this post. Uh, check it out. See if you want to implement it. If you know, if you're into that sort of thing, you should be doing tracking. Uh, but um, just know that some of the stuff is probably more likely going to change. Good information to know. Good information to be able to apply. Um, but I don't know. Just kind of use some caution, in my opinion. Finally, we're going to roll up, roll up with code in wp.blog, and this is actually a pretty good one. Uh, it's 120 plus great content sheets for WordPress, uh, WordPress developers and designers. Uh, checklists is essentially what they did is I went all over the internet and found a whole bunch of checklists for uh, people who are coding or designing in WordPress and then threw them all together in one resource. If you're into SEO, you should probably know a little bit about this, especially considering the value you WordPress plays in the internet community, like 60 odd percent of the sites are WordPress. Uh, or some crazy number like that but you know just kind of know the the ins and outs of this you don't have to be a developer you don't have to train yourself to be a developer but if you know how to edit a css sheet or the html or javascript sheets or the theme code and you just make yourself a little bit more effective for your clients or yourself if you're doing it you're kind of a diy person so check this out if anything bookmark it then you just have it handy and then you're good to go 
uh, for for down the road. That's what, that's what we did. It just kind of they did the work, so we just do the bookmark, and and now we have a, a resource to go to uh, if you need it. You know, break glass in case of emergency. It's that it's that easy. So that's it. Episode fifty six. I know I went by quick. Kind of narrowed it down for you. I think these are some really interesting articles. Nothing earth shattering last week though, so. No sense in rambling on if there's no need to ramble on. With that, I hope you have a great week, and thank you for listening to SEO This Week.